thank you all. It is a distinct privilege for me to be here with you today. And it is a bit daunting. What is it that I could say to the thousands of Iranian patriots gathered in this room today? And more importantly, what is it that I could say to the millions of Iranians who will literally risk their lives to watch this gathering on televisions in your country? And the Iranian people seek only what all people on this planet want and deserve. That is to live their own lives the way they choose, celebrating their religion or not as they choose, being able to grow their children in peace and prosperity. And therefore, as we gather here today, and as those in Iran who would seek our support are listening, we should spend just a few minutes thinking about our options to help. As a military man, of course, one option is the military option. It is a bad option. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Is it a credible threat? Yes, it is. Certainly, the United States and all of our allies have the military capacity to do something about the situation in Iran. The problem with that, of course, is that inevitably it destroys the infrastructure of the company, of the country, and also kills innocents. Another option is negotiations. Well, the entire Iranian nuclear arms program has been built during negotiations. It's not that negotiations are not a reasonable path to follow. It's that if you're going to negotiate, you must have someone to negotiate with, someone who's sitting on the opposite side of the table with a clear view of what is possible and a willingness to make trades to come to agreement. But there is a distinct difference between negotiations, which lead to agreement, and negotiations which lead to appeasement. And right now, given the history of negotiations with the Iranian regime, there is not a good reason to believe that more years of negotiations will produce anything other than more intransigence on the part of the Iranian regime. That leads us then to why you are all here and why hopefully your fellow citizens in Iran are listening tonight. And that is popular uprising. And it is possible, and it is being demonstrated, as we all know, daily over the last month or so. Certainly in Tehran, in February and March, there have been popular uprisings. And as you look across the sweep of northern Africa and all that has happened in Egypt and is going on in Libya, when you look at all those people who seek their freedoms, it gives us great hope that in Iran, the millions of individuals who want their freedoms will have that opportunity sooner rather than later. So who is going to lead? You are going to lead. I.
I listened to the president-elect's words. I've read the 10 points. They are inspiring. And I have struggled with understanding the MEK issue. What I know, what I have read, what I have been able to discern, all of that tells me that the MEK does not deserve to be titled a terrorist organization. <laughs> Certainly, the fact that the current regime in Iran obsesses over the MEK is a huge point in the MEK's favor. If this regime is against the MEK, that means that the MEK stands for what the president-elect has said it stands for. So, the people in Iran want freedom. You in this room want to support that freedom. The individuals in Camp Ashraf deserve to be protected. We in the United States made a promise to them when they voluntarily laid down their arms and went into the camp that they would be protected. I do not understand what 210, now 240 loudspeakers do in the form of protection. What is the positive reason for those speakers? I cannot think of one. The individuals who are in that camp deserve to be protected. The Iranian people deserve to live free. We should do all in our power to assist them and an example of how to proceed is what has happened in Libya. It is fine, it is good, it is wonderful that we gather together like this today. In Libya, the Arab League called for action. The United Nations Security Council called for action. So as we plot our way forward, to the inevitable freedom for the Iranian people. As we think through how to get where we, from where we are today to where we want to be in the very near future, we need to have the voices inside of Iran speaking. We need all of you patriots outside speaking. We need the region to come together and call for freedom in Iran. And then, and then we will hasten a day when we, can, when we can all gather together in Tehran and sip some tea.